Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video from your favorite man child, Super Jesus Jackson. I decided to do this talking head video because I was compelled to do so because of Alien Romulus. I recently went to go see it in the theaters, saw it in, in IMAX, the theater was full, and it was definitely a cinematic experience. It's a fun movie to watch, I'm not going to lie, but at the same time, as fun as it is, it is incredibly infuriating and it highlights the anxiety and the concern that I have for the movie industry and where it's going. Now, I, I understand a lot of you love Alien Romulus, and, and I'm going to stress that this video is not specifically about Alien Romulus. It's just that it was the impetus to start this sort of brainstorming for this video. And it's what I'm going to say is nothing new. Plenty of other people on YouTube, uh, much more famous and, and bigger than me, have covered this topic. And it's basically the lack of originality in the Hollywood industry right now, in movie making. The lack of balls, I guess I'll say, to put money into original ideas, to put money into new IP, to new potential, not always, but could be franchises. It's Hollywood's insistence on reaching back to the past and extracting that and putting it in modern movies, putting it in franchises and, and just extending franchises, that is. That's what Hollywood is doing, a lot of. Now, before you go into the comment section and just shit on me, I'm going to stress uh, that I don't think that this is the entirety of the of the movie making industry. You know, we, we just saw Long Legs, which is an original horror movie that made well over its budget, made well over profit. And it was an awesome movie. I, it was not my cup of tea entirely. I appreciated the film. But, you know, it's at least an original film that a lot of people liked. And again, in the horror realm as well, there was a, a movie, I think last year, called Talk To Me, that did very well. A24, Neon, you know, these are movie production studios that are just putting out incredibly original ideas for films. And they're making decent money, I think, right? We know of Poor Things, of course, the Yorgos Lanthimos, uh, Emma Stone, um, Willem Dafoe film and their other venture kinds of kindness didn't do so well um, but it was another original film but you know poor things did incredibly well uh, at least in the Academy Awards area I'm not sure about the box office but I think it, it made a decent made a decent profit I think and you know other things as well you know I don't know Civil War Alex Garland I mean it didn't necessarily break any box office records but you know it came out it did something, you know, it wasn't a complete bomb. And then we have, of course, George Miller with, you know, Furiosa, um, a Mad Max saga or whatever, which was an incredible film, but did not make money at all. And that is sort of, I mean, that's an auteur film, um, you know, and, and that was a part of a franchise, Mad Max. I wish George Miller did other things <laughs> other than that. But, you know, it was still a good film. Um, and, you know, definitely the Mad Max franchise needs to go to sleep, I think. But, you know, I mean, that is an auteur film, you know, that that's a film that is not your typical sort of franchise, you know, Disney Hollywood film. And unfortunately, it didn't do that well. Um, but that film is sort of on its own in, in terms of what I'm talking about here. But I think it, it is, it goes in line a little bit with the general, I don't know, fear that I have of the fact that people just don't like to go see movies, um, you know, uh, as much as they used to. However, that, at least, people don't want to go see auteur-driven movies, you know, cinema, as we'd like to say, or as Martin Scorsese would like to say. But, you know, that, that doesn't... The thing about it is I, I don't want to put myself into a corner here because, you know, I, I don't want to be put in this basket of a bunch of commentators on YouTube that are saying and social media people, they're saying, you know, cinema is dying and, you know, people don't like to go to the theaters at all anymore and that there's no original movies at all. I don't want to be that guy because it's not true. I'm not the doom and gloom guy because it's just not true. You know what I mean? Like Deadpool and Wolverine just broke box office records. Um, Inside Out 2. But again, you know, those are franchise films and those are you know character driven ip driven films you know what i mean and you know i mean pixar's pixar but you know inside out was a huge success and then inside out 2 you know is a sequel to that so it's going to do really well and a lot of it a lot of pixar's other original films um like turning red or elemental didn't do that well elemental did end up doing okay uh did pretty well but you know i mean it's not it's not inside out big you know what i mean um and it's a shame 
it's a it's a real shame. But cinema in the box office and, and you know and going to the movies is not necessarily dying. I, I don't think it's going to go anywhere yet. I mean, it's not as big as it used to be for sure. But like, I just don't want to continue this narrative that you know it's all doom and gloom and you know cinema's dead. You know what I mean? And originality's dead because it's not. Like I said. There are plenty of original films that are coming out. They're doing okay, but, you know, are definitely not doing as good as they should. And, you know, the, the films that are mostly doing okay, you know, sequels, IPs, you know, uh, remakes, whatever. And I'm just going to read you a list, actually, now that I'm talking about that. I, I just started thinking about all the things that are in production or the things that are definitely going to happen um, in terms of in the movie industry that continued my my concern you know that that elevated my concern for for the hollywood you know movie industry and i'm gonna put alien romulus aside for a bit um but i'll definitely come back to it after i read this list but you know we have heat 2 okay of course the michael mann film heat was uh, i think uh, i haven't seen it i heard it's really good they're making another one with austin butler heat 2 we reportedly have an anaconda remake uh, of course, the original Anaconda with Ice Cube and Jennifer Lopez. No one asked for this. No one did, but apparently it's happening. Gladiator 2, of course, coming out this November. The Crow remake, which just came out, uh, which I have to make yet a video about. I did see it, but I'm going to go see it again. That one is, you know, it's a remake of a movie that came out 30 years ago. It's not the worst terrible idea, but, you know, it is a remake. Uh, we have Rush Hour 4, reportedly, uh, you know, being in talks. Why? Why? Rush Hour 3, you know, it wasn't as great as the first one or the second one, but it happened. And, you know, leave it at 3. Why do we have to go 4? Why? Do I want, Would I like to see it? Yes. Would I go see it? Yes. But, like, should it happen? That's the question, you know? Um, Bad Boys 4. Apparently it did okay in the box office. Why? Just why, is it, why, why did that happen? Jurassic World coming back. Um, Inside Out 3. You know, Disney released a, a bunch of news at D23. Inside Out 3 is happening. I'm sure it's going to do well. And that is, you know, because I love the Inside Out films a lot, you know, Inside Out, Inside Out 2, incredible, incredible films. Inside Out 3, it's like, all right, fine. You know, let's have Inside Out 3. Go ahead. Sure. Whatever. It's it's this thing where, like, you know, you already made the second one, so you might as well just make a third one. Once you make the first one, it's like, okay, you can leave it there or you have to make a trilogy. Like, you know, <laughs> like, it's kind of like that. But again, another, you know, franchise that we're, we're getting another one. Um... Incredibles 3, I, again, they already made the second one, but it's like, my God. And then Moana 2, uh, who asked for that? I, I don't know. Um, Lilo and Stitch live action. Ugh. Part of the charm of the original Lilo and Stitch was the animation, was the fact that it wasn't live action. <laughs> oh, God, but it's happening. Um, Toy Story 5, which I think is one of the most egregious because we all know it should have ended at Toy Story 3. Once you don't stop at 3, it just gets worse. I'm telling you, the movie industry is running out of ideas. They're scared. Alien Romulus, which we just had, but that is, um, like I said, I'm going to put a pin on that. Beetlejuice 2, why? Um, I, I, I don't know why. The Mufasa prequel by Disney. Uh, it's a live action, you know, prequel to the live action Lion King. No one asked for that. No one did. It's weird. It looks like National Geographic, but not really. Um, it's bizarre. Lion King and, and a lot of Disney animated movies, again, are special because of the fact that they're not real, because of the fact that they're animated. It's so bizarre. It's these lions can't emote, man. You know what I mean? Because lions don't, they don't look like they emote in real life. It's bizarre. And, you know, it's so funny, you know, back in the day, a lot of these sequels to even the Disney animated films, you know, like Lion King 2.5 or whatever the hell, they went straight to home video. And for good reason, because, you know, they're not, you know, they're cheap, they're low budget and they're bad. But, you know, I get that, you know, we don't have the ability to do that nowadays, you know, um, yeah, as much that is. And so, you know, we're going to do a uh, number two or a number three or a prequel and we're going to put them out in three in theaters, you know, with full production, you know, and everything. Um, but this goes in line, and I, I just thought about A Quiet Place. Um, you know, there's A Quiet Place, a Quiet Place Part 2, which I thought were brilliant films. And then we have, you know, Day One, um, which was a good film. But can we just stop it here? Can we just stop it here? Jesus Christ. But, you know, the, the, this video is about, you know, the prevalence of sequels and sequels and the insistence on going back to the past, you know, doing prequels or whatever. Um, or reaching back into franchises that were dead and putting them back into the modern, you know, era. And I, I don't know, I am, 
Alien Romulus is the recent example of that going bad, you know, because, my God, I mean, Alien as a franchise, I think, is, um, I think it's seen better days, we know that, um, and I, I just, I don't know, let it rest, you know what I mean, and and let's go back to, even though Alien Romulus was, um, I believe, you know, it was a little bit of, you know, there had been a, a big pause, I think, between the Ridley Scott, you know, sort of spinoff films, and then and then we had Alien Romulus uh, years and years later, which, you know, I, I guess they let it rest somewhat, but it's just like, I come at this, you know, topic, at this conversation from the mind of someone who is 26 years old, okay? Uh, and I, I appreciate old films. I appreciate older franchises and stuff like that and their importance to the, to the art of cinema and to the history of cinema. Um, but Alien Romulus, to me, was the, one of the biggest slaps in the face to cinema and to the purity of, of the art form and to the essence of the art form that I have seen in a long time. Uh, and it's because of the fact that it is devoid of originality. It's devoid of audacity. And it highlights the lack of audacity that the Hollywood industry and the movie production, you know, and world is right now. I mean, for God's sakes, Deadpool and Wolverine, we had to bring back Hugh Jackman, you know what I mean, in order for that movie to make a billion dollars. It's bizarre and it's concerned, but Alien Romulus, man, I, I just can't believe it. Reference after reference after reference, uh, you know, for, for, of previous Alien films, and it is such a copy of Aliens. Um... And it was so disgusting to see the movie, you know, straight rip, you know, some of the dialogue from Aliens and people just cheering. And it's like, are these people who are che cheering just a bunch of, you know, older folks who just want to see their favorite movies again? You know, which is fine, I guess. But like, don't you want new stuff? Like, don't you want new ideas? And especially for the modern, you know, audience, you know, the 26-year-old moviegoers who don't have a nostalgia to Alien. Why the hell would you just want to repurpose Aliens, you know, and then other previous Alien films, and then, and then put it out as a new film, and then expect us to love it? it? It just, it's bizarre. It's like, we don't have that attachment, that's number one. And number two, you know, we want something new. You know what I mean? Like, we, we don't care. You know, we don't have that attachment to the past. So we want something new, you know, and you can take inspiration, you know, of course. But my God, it just felt it, it had nothing original to it. Nothing at all. It it was awful. And, you know, and this is someone who had recently watched Aliens. You know, I, I watched Aliens before Alien Romulus. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is pathetic. You know, not only is Aliens a better film, <laughs> that's the thing too, is it's like, at least make a better film then if you're going to copy it, and it didn't. You know, it had some interesting ideas here and there, but it totally didn't, and it is just a slap in the face to creativity. I don't know how you can be a creator and create something that is so similar to something else that has come before. It's disgusting. It's it's offensive. And I know Fede Alvarez is a, is a talented filmmaker, and I know that he maybe he... Maybe it was a studio. Maybe that's what it was. And it's, it is just disgusting that that film came out. It truly is. I, I just, I'm appalled. I'm offended. Um, and it, it just, I cannot believe it. And so it really reinforced and it motivated me to think about, you know, where cinema is and where it potentially might be going, where it already is going. Um, and it's just a, such a goddamn shame, you know. Gladiator 2, like I said, is happening. I, look, I'm a fan of Ridley Scott. I'm a fan of the original Gladiator. I, I just, I can't. But it's like, why? Why are we going back? Why are we doing this? You know, Gladiator was so powerful. You know, on its own, why do we have to make a sequel? I don't understand why. And it's because Hollywood is so afraid to be original. And I understand it because there's millions and millions of dollars on the line. And you do not want to waste that. You want to invest, you know, investors want to put their money into ideas and production studios want to put their money into ideas that will make them money. You know, 
will make them a huge profit. I understand. That's why a movie like Deadpool and Wolverine, which, to their credit, they built up to it for sure in the previous Deadpool films. I mean, they were teasing the hell out of a collaboration between Wolverine and Deadpool. So I get it. It's beautiful. And that's why, you know, I guess it sort of worked, right? But like that movie would not have made a billion dollars had it not been for Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine when he was supposed to be dead. You know, Logan was the send off to Wolverine to Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and we just had to bring him back right and then and then even Deadpool makes a joke in the movie of like fucking you know Hugh Jackman like you're gonna be playing this character for 96 years or whatever <laughs> and you know that movie again you know, it had cameo porn as some people call it you know and then this goes into the whole you know sort of multiverse thing obviously Marvel and Disney have a love and, and just an incessant desire to have multiverse everything you know and even um, Sony, you know, with their with their uh, Spider-Man franchise, without Spider-Man, you know, when you think of Kraven the Hunter, or Venom, Morbius, their insistence to make these movies franchises and to have them connect to each other, you know, and, and they ended up falling on their face with it, you know, and it's just, my God, and I know that when it works, it works and it's good, you know, I understand that, you know, when you think of like even a movie like Everything Everywhere All at Once, which is what, which was an original film, but it had that multiverse influence, you know what I mean, that Infinity War influence. Uh, which was interesting. Uh, and that one panned out pretty well. You know, I enjoyed that film. It can have some positive effect, you know, here and there, but Jesus Christ, like, it's just, it's so frustrating as a young person, you know? Uh, and I'm not, you know, too, too young or whatever. I'm not 15 years old, but it's it's incredibly frustrating because, you know, I love the past, you know, and I love great films and I collect old films, you know, but like, why do we have to go back to the past again? You know what I mean? Like, why do we have to make these references and make a ton of movies with a bunch of cameos and references and and continue franchises that let's get a new alien? You know, let, let's create a new alien franchise, a new sci-fi franchise. Let, let's create new things, you know, and you can get inspired by certain things, you know, obviously. Alien was inspired by something, and, and all these franchises were inspired by something that came before, you know, but they created something new. I, I know that cinema in general is not the oldest art form in the world, you know, so it, it's still growing, you know, and it's still evolving, but my God, like, it's just, we're running out of ideas already, you know? I'm just concerned. It's like sequel after sequel and extension of a franchise after extension of a franchise. Uh, and oh my God, remakes and live action. Oh my God, dude. It, it's just, please stop. Just please stop. And But the problem is, you know, at the end of the day is that people will still go see these films. They will make money. You know what I mean? Like we, you know, studios and, 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 and people, executives, they see the success of Deadpool and Wolverine and they're like, why the hell should we stop? You know, why? Why should we not bring back Hugh Jackman as Wolverine? You know, it just means more money. But unfortunately, it's just that means the the uh, that means more torture for creative people for artists that truly want to bring something original um and you know people who are in the movie industry you know say it's incredibly difficult to make a movie it's one of the hardest things in the world because you have great ideas and then you present them to the studio and then they end up forcing you to change them in order to give you the money to do it so i get it i, I totally get it uh and so I, I just know that a lot of this is not the fault of creatives um it is the fault of studios. But at the same time, even from their perspective, I understand it because you want to make money. I understand that. You know, I totally get it. That's why creative people, a lot of creative people aren't businessmen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> So I get it. But, you know, it, it doesn't mean I'm not frustrated and it doesn't mean I'm not concerned. I don't know. I just wanted to make this video and, you know, hopefully my point was well made and, and you know, you have something to say. Please go in the comment section below if you have some thoughts. If you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm right, um, please give this video a like if you liked it. Just like it if you didn't. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. Uh, and share with your movie-loving friends, if you will, and, and see what they think. Have them join in on the conversation. If it's your birthday, happy birthday to you, you beautiful creature. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. You all take care, stay safe, and until next time, I love you.